I am ready for my teacher. I am ready for my grandma. I'm running for my mom. I'm running for myself. Whether you run, walk, or stroll, discover with every step your power to change the world. Join us in the fight against breast cancer, October 9th at Isotopes Park for the Susan G. Coleman Race for the Cure. Register today at ComanCNM.org. Whose life are you running for? I'm Julia Jackson, and this is Music Unite. Hey, this is James with Music Unite. I'm here with a band so cool. They've got Skull in their name. Tell us your name, guys. Skull Skulldren. Right on. Let's go around the table and uh, introduce yourselves and tell me what you play. Clayton Nunley, play bass guitar. Ray Cordova, vocals. David Baca, guitar. Alex Garcia, guitar. Andrew Spengel, drums. Skuldren being an unusual word I've never heard before. How did you guys come up with the name Skuldren? Andrew's one. Uh, we were pretty much trying to just come up with a name for the band and throw some cool words around. And uh, Skull and Cauldron kind of came up in the same conversation and uh, mixed the two together. Came up with Skuldren. Skuldren, right. And so uh, I've seen, I seen you guys are touted as like doom, stoner, southern kind of metal. How did you guys achieve that kind of genre? It's just kind of... Uh you know, a mix of the influences that we have, you know, we're, we're all kind of into, you know, you know, a lot of Black Sabbath kind of based stuff, you know, Ray, myself, and, and Andrew, you know, are, are pretty heavy, you know, old school Black Sabbath fans, and, you know, Down is, you know, kind of a uh, favorite bars, you know, Orange Goblin, Pentagram, Caius, you know, Goat Snake, Pentagram, Goat Snake, you know, so collectively with all that, you know, mixed in the pot, you know, that's, that's kind of just the sound that, that came out when we started playing. So, you guys, five people in the band, I know you guys must all be listening to different stuff. How does that, uh, do you guys take those individual listening preferences and come together and kind of blend it into your own sound? How does that progress? Yeah, a little bit. I mean, you know, Andrew doesn't play double bass drum, he still takes a traditional just single pedal, and there's some riffs that I have in there that I'll throw in the chord things like Primus does, because that's, you know, Les Claypool's a big influence of mine. And I do a lot of screaming that's like a lot of screaming that comes from my earlier like punk rock influences and I definitely like like old school thrash black metal and, uh, you know but I also love the you know the old school clean melodic vocals you know the more classic sounding vocals you know like Robert Plant you know the power guys you know the big boys nice. um, mm -hmm. you know Sabbath, early Sabbath Ronnie James Dio Ozzy all that stuff so it's a mixture and I think and I think that's Kind of, I think, what makes this band special, you know. So a quick question. I know you guys keep mentioning the, the classic influences. A lot of guys have gone to five-string basses and, and all these extreme stuff. Are you still playing a four-string? Yeah, I still play a four-string. Right. And, and then back to you on the drums. Are you playing a trap kit, or do you have anything augmented to that? We're pretty old school, you know, in our approach. Uh, you know, and that shows, I think, in our music there. You know, we're uh, a loud, heavy band, you know, but... Uh, you know, we're like not really technical. We're just you know, rock and roll. Right. I see you guys bring it. To, you guys bring it and uh, let the people get lost in your music instead of lost of the complexity of the music. Is that that's kind of what I'm getting from you guys? Is yeah, let's definitely. bring back the feel good time of rock and roll when you show up and it's a rock and roll party. You know, like they used to have. That's right. kind of what the vibe I get from you guys is. You know, there's enough seriousness in the world. Let's let's put on a show so everybody can come and relax and enjoy themselves. There's too much um, for. I mean, I, I, I may be speaking from us. There's too much frills in rock and metal. For me, there's just too much. And we had a little bit of conversation about that a few minutes ago. Um, it's Nowadays, I think in this generation, everybody, it's all about the show and how you look and the crowd you hang out with and, you know, you know what kind of cool clothes you're going to buy at Hot Topic. It's not about that for us, you know. Like I purposely, like, go, like, on eBay and look for the old shit that I don't have. You know, it, it, it's it's... I just don't get it. I understand maybe I'm a little bit older, but um, I think there's just too much frills. I think we need to take this band, I think, takes it back to the way it originally, like, rock and the classic sounds were and the way, you know, we would approach things. When we, look at us, we dress like we dress every day. 
you're not gonna see us in you know like corsets and black leather skirts and shit like that. You know, you're not, you're not gonna see this band like looking like that anytime soon. So it's called is rock and roll. It is. Yeah, yeah, it just takes it back, you know, to off the streets, you know, off the street kind of music. You know that feel. You know, we're just you know working class guys that you know bring it and. It's all based you know, around a good riff. We bring, you know, write a good riff, and you know, Ray builds a vocal around that, and it just progresses into, you know, a good song. And so far, you know, we've got uh, about ten songs that we have, you know, in written in their complete form, and you know, ready to. We're in the process of recording now, and uh, yeah, it's it's been been a good ride so far. First so, year anniversary. But, yeah. That's what I was going to ask you. The next question: How long has you guys been gelled together as a band? And it's <clears throat> You just answered that. Uh, yeah, we started out probably like uh, four months. Uh, we would July, August of last June, year. June, actually. June of last year. Okay. Just you and I, pretty much. Yeah, it started with me and Ray, and then we picked up Andrew along the way, then Clayton, and we you know did a few shows like that. And a few months into it, we got uh, Alex on another guitar, and that just added another another element to it, you know, because he's got some different influences that uh, that I play off of and he plays off of. And so it just builds the guitar sound a little bit more and just makes it real, you know, thick and beefy. So when you're playing, I know since you guys are talking about classic, the classic Thin Lizzy sound, double lead guitars, are you guys doing any of that? Or are you guys, you know, rhythm, lead, switching off? Or how do you guys approach your guitar playing? We, we've got a little bit of a uh, little bit of all in there, you know. Sometimes it's just uh, one of us playing the rhythm and one of us playing the lead. And sometimes we do a little bit of, you know, lead stuff together, some harmonized stuff. Yeah. Women, you track that does have the total like a uh, yeah, it's got a little bit of thin we have, effect in there. We have a, the newest track that we wrote that we completed is called Siren Serenade, and to me, I mean, I heard some total thin Lizzy, you know, like a, you know, Robo Scott Gorham, you know, seventy yeah, seven yeah, or yeah. thin Lizzy, and that was the first thing I said, and um, yeah, and and I'm a huge thin Lizzy fan personally, I, I am, you know, but I I hear that in some of our stuff. Um, maybe I want to hear it, but I, I definitely do hear it between the two guys. I kind of I saw some, I heard some of that influence. That's why I brought that. that I, kinda, I you know, one thing you guys said that kind of hits home is back in the seventies, and we heard working class rock and roll. You know, you think back to Sabbath, you think back to Judas Priest. Those guys were all working class guys that put their passion and their love into their music, and I'm, that's what I'm kind of getting from you guys as well. Is you're trying to bring that back, trying to bring back the passion of music. Yeah, that's how it is. You know, there's, there's been time, you know, I think we recorded, did a little recording session one day, and Andrew just had a day, you know, running the jackhammer. So, I mean, you know, we're literally just, you know, working class guys that do what we do during the day, and at night, we put on guitars and get behind the drums and just kick ass. So, um, where do you guys see yourself progressing to? Uh, so far, we, you know, for being a young band, you know, only being together a little over a year we've already played probably close to about 30 shows and uh, you know we're starting to get you know some more notoriety and you know people are starting to notice us we played uh, out of state last month in uh, Tucson Arizona and we had a real good response out there so you know hopefully we keep that momentum going and just you know keep with a, it a new record for sure and um, you know hopefully some more out of you know out of town shows get the word out there even further than Albuquerque I think we've been blessed um, and I want to say thanks to, you know, to all the people that have helped us. I mean, yeah. we've had, I mean, I've strictly, like, I've played in mostly downtown clubs in the last, you know, 20 years or whatever. You know, you know, David has played, and um, Anders and Clay here have played more Heights area clubs. That was the first time I ever played those places. You know, I may have seen, you know, went to shows there as, you know, as I was growing up. But the fact that we can, you know, we can play Launchpad, Bird's Tiki Lounge, and then the next week we're playing Elliot's, and the next week Malarkey's. I, you know, I don't know many bands in this town that are doing that. Now those are some of those clubs were exclusive to booking cover acts. Um, so I mean, I think we've been blessed over the last year. I mean, I, I, I have never, I don't see bands do what we're doing like that. I mean, at least not as often because every month we're booked at almost at every one of those places. And we, you know, do play with cover bands too sometimes with yeah. originals and uh, that's kind of unique because usually original bands kind of stick original and covers cover but uh, you know we play every you know different places and uh, different bands and 
a lot of the uh, established bands that they've been asking for Skuldrin, you know, to, to play with them. And stuff. Oh, that's a major coup for you guys. Yeah. So I got a question, Skuldrin, dream gig. Or dream gig. In, in town or... Any, hey, with any band? If you could be on any the bill. Wind, the moon. Any bill with any band, you know. Black Sabbath, that for me. Yeah. Oh, that'd be it. You know, just her stage, you know. Man, that's so, you know, so hard to even think about. I mean. <laughs> Black Sabbath and Lizzie and Motorhead for me. You know, Sabbath. Um, Sabbath down, yeah. you know. Uh, yeah, that's a tough one. I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah. Black Sabbath Slayer. I mean, you know, that's that'd be a good one too. Yeah, yeah that's yeah, that's that's Clayton's favorite band. So. Mm-hmm. Right on, guys. Thanks for coming to a Music Unite. I appreciate it. I hope we can thank you get you guys out and get some more people on board the Skeldon Express. We'll call it, you know, this is James with Music Unite here with an interview with Skeldon. Let Music Unite us all. Thank you, guys. Badass Brewery. It's bad. <laughs>